and welcome to today's QDU Academy session. Today, we're going to be looking at the long prep topic for round three for year eight for this year. And that topic is that we should legalize vigilantism in high crime areas. In these sessions, we're going to start by looking at the context behind the debate. Then we're going to go into setting up the cases for both teams. Then we're going to get into some tips about brainstorming arguments. And then finally, a couple of tips for this particular debate. So the first thing to look at, as always, is what to research before this debate takes place. It's everything that you want to know before you even start writing arguments. And this is an activity that varies slightly depending on what type of debate you are doing. This particular debate is a should debate, which means that the affirmative team is changing the world in some way. And whenever the affirmative team is changing the world, a good thing for the affirmative team, and in fact also the negative team, to have an idea of before the debate starts is why does the world need to be changed? What is the problem that we are trying to solve? So I'm gonna give a few questions that are useful in terms of starting to think about the topic and a couple of things that I think make this particular topic a bit tricky in this regard. So the first question is just what is vigilantism? Because obviously this is the big premise of the debate is legalizing vigilantism. Now, vigilantism in general, uh, it, the best sort of examples that exist of vigilantism tend to be fictional. They're things like Batman or they exist in other comic books as well. But basically where some people sort of take the law into their own hands. So they aren't like members of an existing police force, but they nonetheless assist the police or even operate completely independently from the police in terms of trying to stop crime. Another question to ask is, is vigilantism legalized anywhere currently? Now, importantly, it might be that you find examples where it is sort of legalized and that there are some restrictions, such as like maybe you can only go so far in acting as a vigilante, but you can't like do particular things that the police can do. Um, but it's useful to research partly because if you have an idea of where it's used, you'll be able to think about why it's used, but you'll also be able to look at has it been successful in those examples? The final question is, I think, probably the most important, and it's one that you might not immediately think of. But the question is, why do places have high crime? The reason why this question is obviously very important is that the topic tells us that we're not legalizing vigilantism everywhere. We're legalizing it in high crime areas. But this raises the question of what is the problem that the debate is trying to solve? Usually when you see a debate like this, the first instinct that you have is to think that you're trying to solve a problem of high crime. And so the existing problem is crime and you're going to stop that. But I think that sometimes this can be a bit reductive. The reason why that's important is that I think that different regions have high crime for different reasons. And this is significant because crime does not occur out of nowhere. I think it's unlikely to be the case that many areas that are have high crime just have high crime because the people there are naturally criminals. I think that's likely to be a very unreasonable uh, idea. So you want to think about what are the circumstances that have created the high crime occurring, because this will allow you to debate whether vigilantism does actually solve that problem as specifically. Maybe this debate is really, really different if there's high crime because of like a, a high level of poverty in the region and lack of government support than if there's high crime because there's some sort of like gang violence. Like these two things are probably incredibly different in terms of why the crime is present. And therefore you want to think about how does introducing vigilantism in different regions that have crime for different reasons uh, occur differently. Um, then the next thing to do is to start to define the words in the topic. The first word is vigilantism. Like I think I discussed this a bit on the previous slide, but you'll be able to find ways that define it. Just make sure that you're not too reductive in terms of the definition of the topic. We'll get to on the next slide about what restrictions you might want to place. But when you're defining things, try and keep things quite broad. The second question is, what does it mean to legalize something? And legalizing something is, I think, a really important word in this topic that we'll get to on the model slide as well. But just make sure you define that word. And the final area, to, or the, the final term to define is what does it mean for something to be a high crime area? This is one of the classic traps in topics where people are going to really want to have numbers where they're like, if there's this number of crimes uh, or something like that, you don't need to have specific numbers. I think the best way to define things where it refers to like high rates of something is just to like use words like 
where the crime rate is significantly higher than the national or the state average or something like that, um, because that will still get the idea across without people debating about whether one specific suburb should count as high crime or something like that. So the next thing to look at is the models and the counter models for this particular debate. Now, the really interesting thing about any legalized topic is that legalized topics sort of work as the opposite of ban topics. Now, if you've seen these videos in the past where it's been about ban debates, I often talk about how the negative team in a ban debate can regulate instead of banning, but the affirmative team has to ban something completely. A legalized debate sort of works the opposite way. The affirmative team does not need to legalize all sorts of vigilantism everywhere. They can have some restrictions on it. It does need to be legalized, so you cannot ban it on the affirmative team, but you can have some ways of moderating it. For example, you might want to make a claim that an act of vigilantism to be legal has to be reasonably proportional to the crime that it's stopping, so that it's unreasonable to, if you're responding to a, like a crime such as petty theft, to like kill the person that is committing that crime. That's disproportional. The like harm accrued to the criminal is far, far greater than the harm that society faces if the criminal runs free. Um, that might be one example of like how you might want to restrict it somewhat. The other question is like, is there some sort of regulation and oversight? This is a bit tricky because instinctively it's often a good idea to regulate things. It's a bit difficult to regulate vigilantism given that it necessarily exists outside of existing power structures. But you can look into that. For negative, the big thing is that negative cannot legalize it at all. It has to be completely banned. They're like the affirmative team in a banned debate, except it's a legalized debate, so they're the negative team. But that doesn't mean that the negative team can't also think about whether there are better ways to solve the problem. And remember, maybe the problem that you're thinking about is just the presence of crime, and you think there's a better way to solve the presence of crime. Or maybe you think that, like, actually looking at why there's high levels of crime, there's better things to do to try and stop the cause of the crime in the first place. Now, again, this is a bit tricky for a negative team, because, again, like I discussed at the very beginning, different regions probably have high crime for different reasons. So anything that tries to be really specific might work for some things and not work for other things. Like maybe if you have a problem, which is that the reason why there's a high level of crime is that there is a lack of government support and there are lots of people living in poverty. Maybe that means that in that particular circumstance, a better solution than legalizing vigilantism is to like fund that area uh, like give more government services. But maybe that doesn't work as well if there is high crime for other reasons. The other thing to keep in mind is that the affirmative team can also do things like increase government services. Legalizing vigilantism doesn't necessarily like cost the government money per se, because they're not like paying more police officers or anything like that. These are just like average citizens, which means that the government can still have money to also improve services if that's the negative team counter model. So it is probably most important for the negative team to think of reasons why vigilantism is going to cause harm than try and think of alternative ways to solve the problem. But that doesn't mean it's not also worth thinking of whether there are better ways to um, solve the problem as well. So the sort of key takeaways is, uh, and, and the one thing that you might be wondering, which I think is an interesting question, is why do we have this as a legalized debate, given that I've just explained that it's a bit like a reverse ban debate? Why not just make the affirmative team banning and the negative team gets to regulate? And the reason for that is broadly that when we're setting topics, we try and make the affirmative team need to change the world in some way. The negative team should almost always be allowed to support the status quo, which is one in which vigilantism is not particularly legalized in most of the world, or at the very least most of Australia. And that means that that's why we make it legalized so the affirmative team is changing the world and the negative team can choose to just support how the world currently is. So the next thing to look at is brainstorming point ideas. This is the kind of debate where I think there are a couple of ways to go about trying to think of point ideas. The first is to look at problems. And because one good way of thinking of a constructive point 
is to go from here is a problem that exists to here is how we have solved that problem. So think about what the problems that currently cause crime are and how each of them might be stopped by having legalized vigilantism or how each of them might be made even worse by having legalized vigilantism if you're on the negative team. A second way to think about points is to think about how different groups of people are likely affected by this particular topic. So for example, how are people that might currently commit crimes affected? How are people that are going to become vigilantes affected? Who is likely to wish to become a vigilante? How are existing police forces affected by this topic? All of these are different groups. Uh, or how is just like the average person on the street that is not a criminal and is not a police officer and is not going to be a vigilante? Like, does their life change in any way due to the fact that vigilantism is legalized? Each of these groups probably are affected slightly differently, and so they're a good way to think of very different types of points. Now, as always, having given you a couple of tips of how to approach this, I now strongly recommend pausing the video for a few minutes, and whether you're watching this as a team, as an individual, uh, to spend a bit of time trying to brainstorm a few things that could be points for your side. Um, and now, hopefully that you've paused the video and you've come back, we're now going to move on to the next slide, which is about just structuring arguments. And you will have seen this slide before. If you already feel as if you have a good grasp on this, you might want to just continue to skip over until we get to the next slide. But I think a couple of things to keep in mind for this particular topic are make sure that you link your solution really clearly to your problem. I think a good negative strategy in this particular debate is to think about whether the affirmative team actually solves the root cause of crime as opposed to just trying to address crime but doesn't affect the root cause. And so it's important for affirmative teams to make sure that they connect their solution to their problem. But similarly, if you're a negative team and you're explaining why your counter model is even better, you want to make sure that you also explain how it does fully address the problem in the debate and isn't just some extra thing that the government needs to do because the affirmative team might then have the same problem with your side. So make sure you link really clearly your problem to your solution and then go through the steps that you always see, which is what's your point? Why is it true? Give explanations. Are there examples and evidence that can back up your explanation? The final thing to look at, oh, and then we're sorry, responding to the argument operates the same way in that particular regard. So make sure that you think very clearly about whether the other team solves the problem that they're trying to solve or whether they're trying to solve the wrong problem, perhaps, as well as be quite comparative, especially if the negative team has a counter model. Make sure that you compare which way is better at trying to solve the problem rather than just say, oh, we solve the problem and they solve the problem, but we solve it better. Why do you solve it better? The final thing, and I know this is a question slide, but this is, I think, one really, really important tip for this particular debate, which is that it's quite possible that some elements of this debate discuss some quite sensitive subject matter, particularly if we're looking into reasons why certain groups are underprivileged in society or reasons why people commit crimes. So make sure that whenever you are discussing groups, do not marginalize them. Do not assume that like all people that live in certain areas behave in the same way or explain or just like sort of state that mm -hmm. certain areas have high crime without actually thinking about why that might be the case. And always sort of whenever you are going to discuss sensitive issues, talk about it as if someone from the group that you are discussing is in the room with you, because that will sort of make sure that you don't overgeneralize and you don't act or speak more so in a manner that could be a bit insensitive to those groups. So just make sure that you keep that in mind in a topic like this. But I'm sure that you will all be very disciplined in that regard. Now, uh, as always, I say you've you found this video, so I assume you can find other ones, but there are resources on this channel. There are also resources on the QDU Talent LMS website, which hopefully your teachers and coordinators have knowledge about that they can share with you if you want to find out even more about debating. And finally, thank you very much for watching and listening to this video. Best of luck with this debate and best of luck with all of your debates in the future.